Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at extracting ping and or JPEG images from a file in Illustrator. Now before you begin with any Illustrator file, you'll want to save your AI version of the file. You'll need that in case you need to make changes to it later on because JPEG and ping are bitmap formats, they're not vector formats. So first of all, make sure that you have an up-to-date AI file saved. Now there are a number of ways that you can export to JPEG and I'm going to show you two of them. They work quite a bit differently. So I'm going to first of all select my art because if your art is not sized to the artboard or vice versa, the artboard is not sized to your art, then you run the risk of exporting the entire artboard rather than just the piece of art. And typically it's just the art that you'll want to export. So if you want to just export your art, you'll select it. If you want to export the entire artboard, don't. So with my art selected, I'm going to do the first method and that's File, Export and I'll choose Export As. You'll choose the format that you want to use and so for this first one, I'm going to use JPEG. Now if I wanted to export the entire artboard, I would select Use Artboards but because I've got my art already selected, I'm just going to export that. I'll click Export. Now we get to choose the colour model but if you choose CMYK, that can't be saved as a JPEG anyway, so I'm just going to use RGB because that can be saved as a JPEG image. Quality is going to be the quality of the file. Do you want it to be high quality, so less artifacts and less compression? Or do you want a small file with a lot of compression, a lot of artifacts and a sort of more damaged file if you like? Well, typically you'll want sort of maximum, particularly if you're uploading these to sell, for example. So you'll want a high quality for your image. Now the one option that you can select in this dialog that you can't select in the other one that I'm going to show you is your resolution. So you can choose a resolution of 300, 150 or 72 ppi, or you can click other and go and select a custom resolution. Now for printing, for example, you would probably want high at 300 ppi. Now you can embed the sRGB color profile in the image if you want. That just makes it better for web viewing. So I'm going to do that and we'll click OK. And so that image is now exported as a JPEG. Let's see how we do that as a ping. So again, File, Export, Export As. We're going to select Ping from the drop down list here, PNG. Again, same option to use artboards or not. I'll click Export. Again, we can choose the resolution. You can choose 72, 150 or 300. Let's do 300. Now here we can also select the background color. It can be transparent, white or black. Now if you do transparent, that's one thing that you can do in a ping image that you can't do in a JPEG. You could just have these purple grapes and the stem, but no white background. That would make it handy for adding, for example, to a website which has a coloured background because then you won't get a sort of white box around your art. Instead, you'll be able to see the coloured background through these transparent areas. Typically, that's why you would use ping in preference to JPEG is to get the transparency because ping images are typically larger than JPEG images because you'll see that we don't have an option for quality here. So just be aware if you want transparency, you'll need to use ping. If you don't need transparency, then JPEG might be your better choice. I'll click OK. So having saved our files, let's go and have a look at them in Windows Explorer. So here is our grape sample JPG and our grape sample PNG. You can read off the size of the file here. It has been increased in size because it has been saved at 300 dpi. If I right click here and choose properties, we can read off the properties. These are the dimensions of the file in pixels and the 300 dpi. Now the size of this grape sample PNG image is going to be exactly the same because it was saved out at 300 dpi. There's another method for creating ping and JPEG images. Choose File and then Export and Save for Web Legacy. 
In this dialog, you get to specify the width and height of your image. Now, I've got clip to artboard selected here. So the entire artboard, including the art, is going to be exported. So that's going to give me something that looks like this in the export file. Well, I don't want that to be the case. I'm just going to disable clip to artboard. So I'm only going to export the art itself. And I can read the width and height here. Now they're pretty small. So if I want to enlarge it, I can actually enlarge it here. The DPI or the PPI, in this case, it's sort of interchangeable in Illustrator. They're not actually the same, but read them as being the same for this purpose. The DPI is going to be 96 for all images that are exported out of this Save for Web option. You can't change that, but you can change the finished width. So I'm going to actually make this 2000 because I get the ability here to choose how big I want this image to be. So if I want it to be 2000 pixels wide, that's what I've set it to be. By clicking this icon here, I'm making sure that the height is also going to be changed at the same time so that the image is not skewed out of proportion, for example. I'm going to fit this on the screen. OK, so here is where I get to choose JPEG or Ping. So I'm going to choose JPEG at this stage, but you can see that you get Ping 8 and Ping 24. There's also GIF as an option, but we're just looking at Ping and JPEG today. If you're going to choose Ping, choose Ping 24, not 8, because you get better colors from that. But JPEG, I get to choose the compression quality and the image source quality. So I'm going to choose a quality of 100%. We've got file size. We've not clipped it to the artboard. So we're just going to export the image here. And I'll just click Save. Now I'm going to call this grape sample. I'm going to give it the number two because that's going to be the second of these. This one was exported using a different process. This is the one we're exporting now. I'll click Save. And let's see how we would create our ping here. Again, we need to make sure that our art is selected before we do this. File, Export, Save for Web Legacy. In this case, we're going to choose ping 24. Again, we can choose the size of the final image. I'm going to make this 2000. So Illustrator is automatically calculating exactly how high it has to be to stay in its proportions. I have got clip to artboard disabled so that we've not got the rest of the artboard being exported. And we do have transparency selected here. You can see that if we don't have transparency selected, then we're going to set it out with a white background. But here with transparency selected, we can see the checkerboard telling us that this is going to be a transparent or see-through background. I'll click Save. Grape sample ping. And this is going to be number two. Let's go back to our working images and here are our samples. So this is the JPEG image. If I right click and choose properties, it's going to be 2000 pixels wide by 2556 pixels tall. But as promised, it is only 96 DPI because that's the only option you get from that particular dialog. Here is the ping image. It's not obvious that it's transparent, but it is. You're always going to see these as looking like they're on white backgrounds in Windows Explorer, but in actual fact, that is transparent. And here we have the file size, 2000 by 2556. Now in this dialog, we don't have any DPI showing for our ping images. Just be aware of that. So that's how you can export pings and JPEGs out of Illustrator. You've got the legacy option, which allows you to specify the actual physical dimensions of the file, but you're stuck with a fixed resolution of 96 PPI. If you needed to change that, you would need to go to another application, for example, open it in Photoshop and change the resolution. The export as dialog allows you to choose your resolution, but not your file size. And so you get one with one and one with the other. A little bit confusing, a little bit inconvenient, dare I say that, but that's the way it works. Now, before we finish this video, I have more Illustrator training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 250 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and typically mine will be better. I also have Illustrator training at udemy.com, and there's a referral link for each of these courses in the description below. Please feel free to share these with family, friends, and co-workers. 
I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you've learned things about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.